Hey everybody, welcome back to the Nidus Anarchy series. I'm your host Adam, CIO and co-founder of Nidus. And today I wanna to talk about some stuff that's gonna piss off a ton of consultants out there. I'm gonna show you some very easy ways to detect crappy AI content that's being delivered to you that people are trying to say they wrote for themselves. So I've seen this a lot recently and it's pretty laughable. Like for those that work in AI on a regular basis, you kind of get this weird knack of, you can just detect AI. You don't need to put it into some website that will tell you if it's AI or not. If you work in it day in and day out, you can just tell, you get like an instant gut reaction, right? And what I'm seeing is, I'm not surprised, is a ton of work being delivered by consultants, especially for around documentation and things like that where they just don't wanna do it and they're lazy and code for sure where they're using AI to do it, which isn't wrong, but what is wrong is that they're using AI to do it and they're just copy pasting it, no clue if it's right or not, not reading it, not making it, creating a cohesive thought. And a lot of times it's just wrong because AI hallucinates, right? So if you just copy something that AI gives you, whether it's code or documentation or anything, and just copy and paste it and just turn it in, there's going to be stuff that's wrong. And if you are a professional services company, you should care about that, which is why we do thorough documentation, code delivery, reviews, and checks before anything even goes to a client because I don't ever want to have anything like that go out. So here's a couple quick things that you can look for in anything that's being delivered to you uh, to see if your consultant is being lazy or your employee is being lazy because just because you block AI in your system doesn't mean they don't have it on their computer or on their phone or whatever, and then they send the documents, email, and whatever, and copy the paste in. Everyone can get around stuff is what I'm saying. So... Here's what you can look for within documentation that will signify that this is probably some AI copy and paste work. One of the first ones is the format of the documentation. So AI, for all intents and purposes, especially people that don't really know what they're doing and are just copying and pasting, cannot write long form documentation. So if you have a document that is going to be, let's say 30, 40 pages in, in length at the end, like a design doc or something along those lines, it can't write that. You can't just say, hey, give me a 30-page design doc. It won't do it. You have to do everything in stages and to create a cohesive thought. That's also difficult because it doesn't remember things as it goes through all the times because of the token limitations. There's obviously ways around it to do that. But again, that's when it comes into knowing how to use AI properly versus just typing in a prompt and being like, that's oh, good enough copying and paste because I'm lazy and I just, I just don't want to work on it. And then billing out hours that they absolutely didn't work on. So... Here's what you can look for. First off is the structure of what's given. So AI pretty much always, when you say, hey, give me a document or write up something for me, it starts out with introduction. And then it's gonna have a bunch of other headings. It's gonna use lots of bullets. And then it's gonna finish off with conclusion and write a little paragraph there. And that's kind of what you wanna see. And when you see it, it's great. And a lot of times it's really good. The problem is you can't just copy and paste that because you're gonna have introduction headings in the middle of your document. You're gonna have conclusion statements in a complete different section, that's not the end of your document. And it's not going to make any sense. But for those that don't care and are lazy, they're just going to copy and paste it and just hope no one notices because they didn't notice. So that's one of the first things. You can look for structural stuff on how it works. Again, if you see just a ton of bullets and not full thought, like people don't think and write in bullets for formal documentation. That's notes. That's for outlines. That doesn't work. So if you see a ton of bullets, it's most likely copied in from some type of an AI system. Um, another thing that you can look for is going to be the bullets and the numbering system. So if something is copy and pasted in from another document or from AI, because it was delivered there, a lot of times from AI, everything is in markdown. So if you just copy over and it says one, this is this, two, this is this, three, this is this, and you copy and you put it in your Word doc, and you're like, oh look, this looks great. The problem is, and you'll notice this, is your numbers aren't actually bullets. It's not a numbered list. It's just one dot text, 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 and you can edit the numbers. That doesn't work because that doesn't fit into your heading structure. It's not going to fall up to the table of contents. It's not stylized as a heading. It's not stylized as a, as a numbered list. And it creates layout problems and it doesn't flow well and all kinds of things. And you would never do that in a document. You would use a numbered list. So another key, you know, if they're not... If, if the numbers are editable in a numbered list, copy and paste from somewhere. Short form, if you're just getting, like I said, just short bullets and it's not long thought out sentences, complete cohesive thoughts, also that's a key sign of AI. Another thing that you wanna look for is invalid copy paste mechanism. This happens all the time, right? So if I were to say the red book is my favorite book and I wanna do a find replace and say the green book, I'm, just, I'm gonna do find replace of all items red and replace it with green. 
Well, pro- that's, not, that's all nice when it's a key word and it fits well in the sentence, but sometimes it will be something like the you, you replace you do find replace of red with the green, and now you're going to have a sentence that says the the green or something along those lines. So look for weird grammatic errors where like this doesn't how did this make any sense because you know this word doesn't make make sense well think if you're if you're to take out the keyword and that word that doesn't make sense and replace it with something else it was probably just a find replace so ai a lot of times they don't have the name of the company name of the software name whatever when it's dumping out the results because they don't want to put client information up there hopefully and um and then they just find replace like the company. So it might say say something along the lines of the company's formal um, outlook for 2025 is blah, 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 blah. And then they replace company with the name of the client. And you can't put like the targets outlook for 2025. It doesn't make sense. Why? Because all they did was find replace. So that's another little thing you can look for. Another one that probably drives me nuts the most is not reading the document. I think this is something that would solve all the problems is you can tell no one read it. If you just start at the top and just read through the document, how long does it take before you get to a sentence where it just doesn't make any sense? The, all the words are real words, they're all spelled right, but you're reading it like, what is going, this doesn't make any sense at all, like what is happening? Or the, the thought transition is really sharp from one paragraph to the next. There's no lead, there's no transitionary statements of any kind. That's how you can tell, again, another chunk was copied and pasted in over top of another chunk because the LLM ran out of tokens and it needed a new thought, so it started the next document. These are all real easy ways to tell, you know, someone's been kind of fudging their stuff and being lazy. Now, like I said, using AI to help with your documentation writing, using AI to help with your coding is not bad. Like, it's actually, I I honestly encourage it. It's a much better way to do research. But you also need to cite your resources, right? So like, and if you're going to say, hey, look, here's what you need to do, blah, 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 and you're referring some actual documentation from product and stuff like that, put that in there. Let the client know, like, hey, this is where you can find more information about this, and here's the actual thing from this particular vendor that talks about this, because that's actually beneficial information. People would want that. But if you're purposely hiding that, then you're trying to be shady, trying to pass off someone else's writing as yours, that doesn't fly. And you can also tell that too, because the writing style is different. People, humans, when they write, especially if it's a specific person, you know how they write, you know how they talk, you know how they they approach to solving problems. AI reacts the same way every single time with default prompts. So it's always going to write the same way. And what you'll notice is a changing in writing style as you read through the document. This is what I'm saying. The best thing you can do is read the document. Even though it's time consuming and it's crazy as people order these 40, 50, 100 page documents and they just never read them. Read it. Take the time and read it, and you'll find out real fast that how good or how garbage that documentation is. So now let's talk about code. How much code is being used by AI? Is it good or bad? Well, right off the bat, I think using AI to help with your code development is not only good at this point in time, I'm, to me it's pretty much mandatory because you're wasting time and burning cycles if you're not. Because to think that you are a better developer than an AI system right now is laughable. You're not. You're not near as fast or capable or all knowing as the AI systems are now for development. So if you're not using something like Windsurf or Cursor as your IDE for using AI to enhance your development for autocomplete, for rewriting of blocks, for finding security flaws as you go, like you are just wasting time. You're gonna spend three weeks to develop something that could have been done in three hours using AI and probably be better. So one thing to look for in code that you is, is like, is it AI developed or not? Look at the comments. Comments are a really quick way, very quickly, that you can tell if the code was written in AI because AI loves to say, you know, added comments, all stuff is replace API key here or added this to fit this problem. It's it's a lot of times AI puts comments in the code to alert the prompter of, hey, here's stuff and here's why I did this. You're not talking to another developer. You're not talking to another coder that's going to be sitting there going, oh, that's what this function does. Those aren't like, that's what comments are meant for. But AI is using comments to explain and teach to the person why they're making the changes, not what the changes are doing. So if you see comments like that throughout the code, that's AI generated. Um, Another thing is coding practices. AI is really good at using crazy coding practices that most people don't use. So if you have some crazy functions in there that when you're looking at them and you're doing a code review and you're like, whoa, this is some advanced level coding and you look at the guy doing it, is he advanced level coder of that language? Maybe, maybe not. Now, the whole point of remember, I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to say it's bad that you're using AI for development, 
but you need to know what it's making. You can't just have AI write a bunch of code and just hit play on a production system and just see what goes on. You have no idea what that code's doing. So you have to have oversight. And that's the whole point is use AI to augment your development. And as it goes through, you need to understand what's happening. So a good developer that uses AI to augment their development will learn and understand what's going on as the code, as the, the AI code is being developed and ensuring it's meeting practices and ensuring that it's not creating any type of crazy security flaws or doing stuff that it's not supposed to. So that's one of the bigger differences as well. So I guess the, the big thing I want to take away from this is I, I really hate it when people use AI just because they're lazy and they're not using it to just reinforce their development practices or their, or their writing capabilities or just to make things more efficient. So if you're going to use AI, which I think you should, I'm just saying use better practices when doing so. Make things that are uniform. Give everything a solid thought. Learn how to prompt better. I can think that's probably the best thing I'm trying to say is learn how to prompt better and understand the code that you're developing. Understand the documentation that you're writing. Read the documentation that you're writing. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with using AI, but you cannot be lazy. To me, that's an instant fail because you're already having so much time saved by the AI doing the heavy lifting for you that if you are unable to read the document, how can I trust anything in there actually ever being reviewed and being right? This comes back to the whole brown M&M theory that we talked about one of the very first podcasts that we ever did. So Van Halen had a, a clause in their contract every time they go to a venue, basically for all the stuff that they demanded, which was things like how the stage needed to go, what the lighting needed to be, what had to be in the green rooms and all this kind of stuff. And one of the things that they're famous for was they had to have a bowl of just brown M&Ms. The whole point of this is that so when the band would show up to the, to the venue, they could just walk into the dressing room and they would see the bowl of M&Ms. Now, to someone reading the contract, one of two, one of three things will happen. One, they've read the whole contract and they look at the M&Ms thing and say, that's not that big of a deal. I don't care. I'm not wasting my time. Just here's some M&Ms. Two, they don't read all of the fine details of the contract and they just didn't even notice there was a clause about M&Ms in there and there are no M&Ms or they're just not, or they're not cleared or all brown or whatever. And then the third one is they did it and the M&Ms are all brown. But what it tells the band immediately is that that venue read the contract, and paid attention to the small details. They never cared about the M&Ms being brown or not. What they cared about was all the pyro going on stage and all the technical specifications going on and how accurate that had to be so no one was blown up and caught on fire. So if they couldn't pay attention to a small detail like a brown M&M clause in their contract, what's to make them to think that they're paying attention to which direction to point the pyro so they don't set the singer on fire in the middle of the show? This is kind of my argument with the documentation stuff. If... I read through the document and I can instantly tell that the writer of the document never even read it, then how can I trust that anything in there is actually correct? How do I know what hallucinations have been filtered out? How do I know that this is actually pointing to the right version and the right software and everything else? I don't. It's kind of like if you lie to me once, I'm going to assume everything else is a lie. I'm logical. And most of us in the computer world have logical minds. And if any part of a statement is false, the entirety of that statement is false. So if I read your document and I know any of that part of the document is false, I'm going to assume that everything else in there is probably wrong too. So if you're using AI, you have to use it the right way. You can't be lazy. You need to use it to make things more efficient and do things better and make your life easier. But at the same time, you still have to do the hard work. You still need to read. You still need to make sure everything is correct. Put in your sources, put, create a bibliography, put in footnotes, whatever you got to do, but make sure it's right. Don't be half-assed. Don't deliver these dumbass docs and then try to tell everyone that you wrote this stuff and it took you two weeks to do it. When we all know you did this through AI and copying online documentation last night and then trying to pass it off as if, you know, we're the dumb ones. We're not the dumb ones. So I hope this really helps everyone else out there. I know a lot of contractors are going to be very pissed off at me for telling people this because now they're going to be constantly questioned by their managers like, hey, I noticed you have the word introduction in the middle of a document. Well, you should be called out because you're lazy. Don't be lazy. Do things the right way, and then everything will be great. So I hope this helps a lot of people out there kind of quickly understand and, and realize that their AI is good to use for augmentation for development of documentation code, but you still have to be vigilant, and you still have to make sure that everything is right. So check your code, check your documents, and call people out. You know, have them prove it. Tell, uh, tell them to recite back to them what they, if they wrote that and edited it five times, they should be able to recite that entire paragraph back to you, not verbatim, but you know, they should understand what they wrote, right? Ask them. That's all I'm saying. So I'll leave you guys to it. 
I'll see you guys around. Bye. Nidus has just created the first iOS app made exclusively for identity management professionals. It's called Nidus Breachcast, and you can download it now. It's amazing. We have real-time updates of all the latest breaches that are occurring, CVEs as they come out real-time, really pertaining just to identity management. We have media that's going on this podcast. We're going to be bringing in a lot more others as well. And we even have a complete vendor list of all the identity management vendors and all their products so you can find out exactly where to download their software, all the documentation. And what's even more awesome is an identity management glossary. All those crazy words and acronyms that we can never remember, they're all listed in there for you. No ads, just pure information to make your life simple.